Hello viewers, welcome to this video. Alright, so this one was actually requested by someone a couple months ago. The video is about how you can use GlustrFS in your Kubernetes cluster and how to deploy dynamic persistent volumes to create GlustrFS volumes behind the scene. So I've done this GlustrFS series just for this purpose, just for this one video. If I dive straight into GlustrFS, you wouldn't know what GlustrFS is and how you can actually use it. So just because of that one video, I created this new playlist so this gives you some basic idea about GlustrFS what you can do with it some simple lab setup to try and uh, I've got like nine videos here the most important video is the last one if you want to follow along this video just make sure to watch this ninth video which is about how to manage your GlustrFS so for the first eight videos we saw about GlustrFS how to create volumes snapshots and so on but this one is really what we're going to be using in today's video right so we're going to be using Hecate which is the REST layer, REST API layer to interact with the GlustrFS file system. So you can directly interact with GlustrFS but using Hecate it's like an interface to get into the GlustrFS file system and it makes your life a lot easier. So that's what we will be using in Kubernetes cluster. So make sure to fully watch this video. So I'm just going to repeat some of the commands that I've done in this video but I'm not going to explain them in detail so make sure to watch this video. So in GlustrFS in that video, in the ninth video we saw how to use Hecate. So we basically set up a three node vagrant environment, two cluster node, one Hecate and then using Hecate we created this cluster cluster, added these two nodes to the cluster, we attached devices, we created volumes and so on. Just make sure I'll put a link to this playlist in the in the video description and in my Kubernetes a GitHub repository I've added under YAML's directory, I've added this directory GlustrFS provisioner. So basically I've got three manifest, one for the storage class, one for creating a persistent volume claim and one for the pod. So first let's go ahead and create Gluster cluster using Hecate. So for that I need to log into my Hecate node which is this node here. In my host machine, in my laptop, I've got six virtual machines running. I've got two for the Gluster, one for Hecate and three for Kubernetes and I'm running Kubernetes using my Vagrant environment with one master, two worker nodes and the version is 1.19.4. Alright, so let's log into our Hecate node which is 200 password is admin if you're using my vagrant environment okay so hecate cli clusters list clusters list uh, because my hecate cluster is protected by authentication i need to provide the username and password so let's export so if you remember when we configured Hecate uh, configuration file which is etc hecate hecate.json we specified the username and password which I'm going to use for my Hecate CLI commands. So it's basically these two exports user and the Hecate key. And now I should be able to run the Hecate CLI commands. Hecate CLI cluster list we don't have any cluster so the first step is to create a cluster cluster. Hecate CLI cluster create, Hecate CLI cluster create. So that's our cluster and I can do cluster list. So we've got one cluster. So now we need to attach the two nodes to this cluster. Okay, so this is the important step, which in my other video, in my uh, the ninth video here, I've shown you how to add the nodes to the cluster cluster, which will be something like Hecate CLI node add minus minus zone one minus minus cluster to which cluster we are adding these nodes so the cluster is here so that's the cluster id and management host name is cluster one so that's the first node that we are going to add by the way cluster one is the dns name and i've added cluster one and cluster two's ip address to my etc host file in the hecate node so it can refer it can connect to these two nodes using the dns name instead of ip address all right minus minus storage host name is cluster one so this is what i did in my other video uh, the, the ninth video in the cluster fs series but this won't work if you followed this approach it won't work we might have a problem later when we are trying to dynamically provision cluster fs volume in our kubernetes cluster so the important step here is for the storage host name don't specify the dns name instead specify the ip address of the node. So for cluster 1 my IP address is 172.16.16.201 
Okay, so we've added one node to our cluster cluster. Let's add our second node, which is 202 and cluster 2. Okay, so that's the very important step. The storage host name has to be IP address. Otherwise, I had to scratch my head for a while before I found the solution. Uh, this is what the actual problem is. So I need to specify the, uh, the IP address. Okay, so we've added the nodes. Now we need to attach the disk to these nodes. Okay, so which is Hecate CLI device add. We're going to add the additional hard disk that I've added to my virtual machines. So in my case, it's dev SDC. In your case, it might be dev SDB or whatever disk you've added. And node is, let's add this disk to our first node, which is here, the node ID. And then let's do the same thing for the second node. And the node ID is here. Okay, so device added successfully and I can take a look at one of the node Hecate CLI node info. Let's pick this node here. There we go. So that's our node and we have the device attached dev SDC. Okay, Hecate CLI cluster list. So we have our cluster. Hecate CLI cluster info, the cluster ID. Okay, so we have our cluster, we have two nodes, we don't have any volumes yet, but when we set up our Kubernetes cluster to provision clusterfs volumes, you will see the volumes appearing here. Okay, let me open up another terminal. Let's increase the font size a little bit. kubectl get nodes. So that's our Kubernetes cluster. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to git clone my Kubernetes repository, which I already have, yeah cd to kubernetes and then to yamls and then to glusterfs provisioner so here's where i have all those three manifest files for this demo so the first one we're going to take a look is the storage class okay so let's take a look at what's in the storage class kind is storage class the name of the storage class is going to be glusterfs and i've added this annotation to make this storage class the default so when you're creating the persistent volume claim you don't have to specify the storage class instead it will pick up the storage class because we specified this to be at the default storage class for the cluster okay the provisioner is kubernetes.io slash glusterfs so that's the, the kubernetes glusterfs provisioner that we are using for the storage class so it knows how to talk to the corresponding backend okay so this is important parameters so the rest URL is going to be the the Hecate API URL so 172 16 16 200 is my Hecate node here and it's listening on port 8080 on HTTP it's protected by authentication otherwise it won't work okay the rest user is the username and rest user key is the password so we've used admin and the secret password that's my actual password in plain text in this manifest but what I would recommend is don't use plain text in in the manifest instead what you can do is you can create a secret for this password you can store the secret in a base 64 encoded format in a secret and then you can reference that secret here volume type is replicate so we want to the volumes that cluster sorry the volumes that kubernetes is going to create in glusterfs has to be a replicated volume and by default create two replicas because i know how many nodes i have in my cluster cluster which is two so i want to create two replicas whenever kubernetes creates a volume i want to create it as a replicated volume with two replicas okay let's create that so before that if i do kubectl get storage class i don't have any storage class in my cluster at the moment kubectl create minus f storage class that's created kubectl get storage class and you can see that's the name of our storage class it's the default storage class so i don't have to specify storage class in my persistent volume claims what's the provisioner reclaim policy is delete so whenever i delete my persistent volume claim the persistent volume is also going to get deleted that's done and let's take a look at pvc okay so our storage class is ready now our Kubernetes knows how to connect to uh, GlusterFS and how to create volumes in the GlusterFS file system through Hecate, through the parameters we passed through this storage class. So now all that's left is to create a persistent volume claim and watch whether it's going to create a corresponding persistent volume. 
Let's take a look at PVC. Okay, so this is a very simple one. Kindest persistent volume claim. Name of this PVC is Gluster PVC. Um, access mode is read write once, and I'm requesting a storage of one gig. That's it. Okay, let's do that. Before that, one important step which I forgot to tell you. In order for the Kubernetes nodes to mount a Gluster FS volume, you need to install an important package on all your Kubernetes nodes. That's very important step. Okay, let me log into my worker nodes because I know my master node has a taint associated. So um, whatever I create, it's going to get created on one of the two worker nodes. So let me log into my first worker node. Kubeadmin is the password and the package that I need is clusterfs-fuse. Right, that's installed. Let's do the same on the second worker node install glustrefs fuse cool so that's installed let me get out of it and now i can create the persistent volume claim but before that i can show you kubectl get pvc i don't have any persistent volume claims and here in our cluster fs sorry in our yeah in our cluster fs cluster we don't have any volumes all right let's create it kubectl create minus f so now we are creating a persistent volume claim with one gig of volume we are requesting. Okay, that's created. Soon you will see the volume appearing here if it worked. kubectl get pvc. There we go. So glustrefs pvc, that's the name of the persistent volume claim. Status is bound, which means it has actually created the glustrefs volume. It will soon... Oh, sorry. I haven't actually ran it hecate cli cluster info let me watch let me run this through a loop okay so as you can see here it has created the cluster fs volume for us and you can also take a look at that volume if i copy that hecate cli volume info and paste that volume ID. There we go. So that's the Glustrefs volume that Kubernetes has created. Replica count is two. Okay, let's again watch for this uh, command and see what's going on in our Hecate Glustrefs cluster. Okay, cool. So we have now our persistent volume claim. And now what we can do is let's create a pod and use this persistent volume claim and mount the Glustrefs volume in our pod. So let me take a look at the, the pod specification. Okay, so kind is pod metadata, name of the pod is going to be busybox and I'm just running a busybox container with this command sleep 3600 just to give it some enough time so that we can log into the container, see whether the data has been mounted, write some files to it and then check if it's appearing. This is the volume section and we're using the persistent volume claim that we created earlier. The name of the claim is Gluster PVC and inside the container I'm mounting that Gluster volume to slash data. Okay, let's create this pod. Cube serial create minus F pod. Okay, pod created kubectl get pods container is getting created let's give it a few more seconds kubectl get pods okay so our pod is running let's uh, exec into the pod kubectl exec minus it bc box dash dash shell okay so we are inside our pod and i can do cd slash data so that's the mounted volume and i can write some file to it echo let's write some random data to a file okay so we have our test file and if i cat that file we have our content there let me delete this part bear in mind i'm not deleting the persistent volume claim i'm only deleting the pod so the persistent volume should still be there and on the top here on the hecate node i'm running this in a loop so you can see the volume is still there and let's delete it kubectl delete the pod wait for it to get deleted okay the pod is deleted let's recreate this pod kubectl create pod glustrefs.yaml kubectl get pods okay the pod is running let's again exec into the pod cd to slash data ls and there we go so that's our pod sorry that's our file cat 
test okay so we've destroyed we've terminated our pod recreated a new pod and then we attached the same glass reference volume and still we can see the data there okay let's delete this pod and also delete the persistent volume claim so now we are only deleting the pod so you can still see the volume is still there and once this is deleted we will also try and delete the persistent volume claim that should clean up the volume as well okay pod deleted kubectl get pods kubectl get pvc pvc is there let's delete that kubectl delete minus f pvc as you can see here the volume also disappeared so which means we shouldn't have any persistent volumes kubectl get pv come on pvc pvc sorry so that's the persistent volume i guess it takes a little while to get uh, deleted kubectl get pv yeah that's gone kubectl get pvc that's gone okay cool so give this a try let me know if you've got any questions i'll be happy to help and i will see you all in my next video until then keep learning and keep on learning bye bye